I came. What can I say? You know, there are times that when I see a trailer that has a little bit of a vague explanation of what this movie is going to be about, I tend to get attracted to it because it brings out the curiosity of me to know what the movie is going to be about. Uh, that this mostly works when it has to, when it's an animated film or a fantasy film, and in some cases also the sci-fi film here and there. And sometimes they give us some good surprises, or sometimes you get captive state, state uh, captive state. Uh, I think it was a yeah captive state. That's the movie I just went to see, and. Well, as you can tell from my tone, I am not very fond of this movie. Uh, much, honestly, I, I came out of this movie very, very bored. Because it was it was basically that. It was a very, very boring movie. So and right at the get-go, I can't... I don't think that I'm the correct guy to recommend you this kind of movie. Which is a shame, because it is... It, this one is, it, this movie was directed by the guy who gave us Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which is uh, probably one of the best Planet of the Apes movies there is. Mm, what else I can, I haven't even getting started and I just feel like wanting to finish this, uh, this review. But, but uh, let's endure this and... You might be wondering, okay, what the movie is about? Well, Captain State is it's kind of like a dystopian future. Uh, I'll do my best to describe what this movie is about. The movie is technically kind of like another side of the uh, kind of similar to District Nine, in which aliens uh, take uh, uh, come to Earth. Of course, that instead of living in a ghetto like District Nine, they they take technically take over the world. And, and and they take over the world, they take the resources from Earth, and they make a treaty with the people that, uh, in order to coexist with them. Of course, they, they, have, uh, they control them, and most of them are, all of the resources are controlled by the, the, by the legisl legislation team. And, and, uh, and even though they say that, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, uh, we're making this world better and all this stuff, uh, Technically, well, uh, the world is divided into a world with full of rich people and a world with a lot of full poor people. And the whole movie takes place in Chicago, where we see the, well, and the best way I can describe it is that we see the point of view of, 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 of this world, in which we see, in which there, there is a resistance group that wants to spark a, a revolution, a war, because they are against, the, you know, aliens take over the resources and all this stuff, take controlling everyone and the rich people and the legislative system uh, benefits from that. And there's also a t an, another, the other side, which is the, which is the spies, the kind of, let's say that is kind of like the, Gesta uh, the, the a modern Gestapo in which they try to they try to keep the peace and the treaty between the between the aliens and basically that that's the movie and if you think that this is technically a very interesting interesting plot because let's face it we're talking about aliens and sci-fi stuff is, is always going to be very entertaining you're looking that let me disappoint you by telling you that you're not going to get that. Nope. Because you're not going to believe what I'm going to say this. The aliens is not important. They're not important in this film. And you might say, wait, 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 what is it? What is it? What the, what? How is it possible? If the, if the movie takes place nine years after the first contact? Yep. The aliens take, are, are technically took over. Yep. They make a treaty with the aliens. Yep. So, the aliens are there? Yes. So, there's going to be a lot of alien, alien cool stuff? 
Um, you're gonna see a lot of interaction with the aliens. Um, the aliens barely appeared, aren't you? Yep, the aliens are barely there. So technically the aliens are mostly a MacGuffin. They they establish the setting of the, of this world. They're not exactly important. And instead of an alien movie, we got a little bit more of an espionage film of of uh, spies and a resistance group uh, trying to battle each other wits because. First of all, we got the resistance group side in which they're trying to, to, they're kind of, they're called the Phoenix, the Phoenix group, let's say. They're called Phoenix. They have this, this kind of amazing, uh, amazing wing, wing graphic design that represents them. They, they communicate each other in secret. And, and most of that, it, uh, the, the plot of that, it, it focus on, well, uh, well, uh, a couple of bro a couple of brothers that during their first contact, their parents were killed, and then during those years, one of them became a uh, kind of became a martyr in, in which he lead the resistance group, and and well, he apparently apparently com uh, he was killed during an operation, but he's still alive. It was kind of like a ru ruse to. Uh, to make the to try to to plan to uh, to make a bombing on on, uh, on a special event, uh, but he also we see his brother who is technically kind of re really really reluctant to uh, to continue on the uh, the revolution and all this stuff. He he just wants to settle on his life, but somehow he is he is torn into. He wants to do it because he, he needs money he wants to set up with his with a girl his girlfriend but also he doesn't want to dishonor his brother that's pretty much what i can get but the other side we uh the other side which is the spy side we mostly concentrate in uh, in in kind of like a a spy who who he he knows that the resistance is still there despite uh, despite the uh, Everyone saying, "No, everything's okay. We killed the ringleader." No, I think they're still there. And sometimes we see the uh, trying to converse with. I think he had some kind of rela uh, relationship with uh, with the surviving brother. Uh, just in case the brother is played by what was the name of this guy by Ashton Sanders, and uh, and he also talked with the prostitute. Well, there's no sex scene. Uh, well, actually, there's one, but it's kind of vague, let's say. Oh, and but I will say this, that if there's a little bit of a line, uh, line let's say I liked on this boring-ass film, which I'll get to this, uh, what actually makes this movie a little bit a little bit compelling is the guy who plays the that spy, the one who who is trying to piece up to, uh, that they're, they're still the resistance group. And I'm talking that it's none other than John Goodman. John Goodman is probably the only actor in this movie who technically tries to give it his all despite uh, despite this this film. The other ones, I'm not saying that they're bad actors, but they're okay. Uh, so technically, let's say that that the acting is 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 decent at best, and the whole uh, but the whole crusade of John Goodman is probably the kind of kind of like the most the most interesting, and technically, he's also the most interesting character in this, in this whole thing. The uh, the whole resistance group is something like, okay, well, it's something that we see in every single movie, which I'm not exactly very picky about it. But here lies the problem with this movie: in the emotional factor, is kind of lacking, uh, lacking, and. And the key word for this, for the problem with this movie, is lack of focus. This movie, indeed, is a really, really, <laughs> it's a total mess that of of wanting to have too many plots advancing in one movie, 
and it doesn't settle on, uh, um, on showing us some kind of emotional drive to to every single character. Probably, uh, probably John Goodman is the only exception because he's the only one who I could actually see what uh, see what he really wants. He he does have a little bit of a clear agenda um, on what he's doing. I do have. It, they did wanted to put a little bit of a, a good relationship between these the, the the siblings. I mean the the reluctant sibling and the revolutionary sibling, but we don't. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time with them to uh, to actually uh, actually see that there is an emotional connection between them, and to know the big re uh, the kind of like a like an emotional. An, an emotional reaction to these, uh, and like I said, only John Goodman is, is, is character is the only one who, who actually could see that there is that that the, they give him enough time to establish some kind of relationship with other characters. Not enough, but a little bit clear. Uh, and speaking of focus, um. I think that I uh, did uh, one of the things that was kind of weird is that the movie kind of at first plays out like the like uh, what was the name again? Ashton Sanders' character was going to be the main character, but uh, kind of like uh, in the beginning of the second act, he technically disappears. He technically disappears, and I, I kid you not, I think that we spent like twenty minutes or fifteen minutes long. On a huge sequence where is where is people kind of giving each other hidden messages in the in very creative ways. I gotta admit, in order, um, how can I how can I say? Remember this? Uh, remember in those Disney films, like for example in One Hundred and One Dalmatian, the scene in which in which the one dog they begin one dog begins to bark in one place and another dog begins to bark in another and another and another or the scene of the rescuers down under in which in which each one they begin to pass the message each other imagine that but in secret ways uh, kind of like in in subtle ways to because well they're in a they don't want to be spot they don't want to be spied I forgot to mention that that everything is monitored. It's kind of like 1984. Everyone, everyone is being watched. Everyone is being moni moni monitorized. Uh, the, the, the spies can hear everything, and because it involves aliens, each each person has some kind of parasitic pupa inside of them. i not. They didn't establish exactly what those parasitic pupas do. The only thing that they they do is that there is a scene in which a woman is it kind of begins to panic and they take her away and that's the last thing we see about them. There's also some kind of deportation thing theme going on in which I think prisoners are taken with this in, into a spaceship that looks like a rock. Mm, that's technically it. Again, the aliens are feel not important and I I kind of think that. If I think correctly, the aliens only appear in just three scenes. And if you're wondering, what do the aliens look like? Well, in the first two scenes, they appear, I don't know if they're, it, it is their skin or their armor, but they, they, it, but it, they kind of look like living uh, humanoid sea urchins. And there is also a scene kind of a little bit on the climax, where they, they do wear armor. And, and again, we only see the aliens three times. Just three times. They're mentioned, but apparently they think that this is not the crux of the movie. It's just uh, the crux of the movie is the, I think, the social commentary that they wanted to make, but I fail. Uh, honestly, I fail to notice. Look, I'm not exactly uh, an expert on movies. I'm just a guy who likes watching movies and analyze it. I try to be as professional as ever, but so I don't know if if this movie w I'm the correct audience for this movie. I did try my best, but if I felt so uninterested on this film, a film that. 
some things I I just I just kind of forgot and and probably didn't pay attention um some of the details. Like for example, I think there I, I think the uh, uh some humans who are privileged, they uh they are rewarded by the aliens that they now the aliens I think they and for what I can gather, they now live underground, and the privileged humans, they go underground or something like that. And the movie kind of treats this like it is the, I, uh, what was it, the Grey Havens from, from the Lord of the Rings, kind of like Nirvana. That I didn't get. And the only, th um, but I'll uh, but despite my boredom and the slow pacing of this film, I think the only way that you could probably get invested a little bit on the film is that is to try to piece together and follow the events that happen. You get invested on well the the battle of wits between the the, the rebels and the spies. Uh, probably you're uh, you're gonna feel a little bit entertained, attained. And again, it also it also helps that John Goodman really tries his uh, tries his best on this film, and he succeeds. Although, don't expect kind of like Cloverfield, like the Cloverfield film, or or Monster Inc. John Goodman. You're gonna see a little bit of a restrained John Goodman, but his it, but. He's there. I'm not going to spoil a lot, but I will say about the ending that the ending is, again, shows that this movie really lack uh, focus on, uh, on the emotional support. And the more you... And it is... It feels a little bit insulting to see that the ending kind of feels like a cliffhanger to a sequel to a movie or because the more you think about it, it does feel more like this is like a pilot to a TV series or a mini series. I think that this movie will have to, uh, will have better opportunity if this was more like a mini series or a TV series because with with the uh, with the moment of boredom that I had with this I I I think that this movie shouldn't have been like uh being released in a movie theater. Well, okay, I was being a little bit a bit cynical. It's a nice try. I'm gonna go with a nice try. I'm not gonna hold you if you really like the movie. I didn't like it. I I uh, I'm one of those that I felt that this movie is dull. Is 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 incoherent. It. It didn't build the world better. It, uh, it, oh yeah, I kind of forgot that I also don't like the a little bit the editing of the film. Some shots were a little bit too dark or too close. Um, I, yeah, I, how how this movie could have been fixed? Uh, to see the world, to see a lot more in the outside uh, outside world. You're gonna see. Some snippets here and there, like for example, they, there are scenes of these flying. Oh, I I don't know what it what was. There were some flying drones that they look like swarms. Um, you see a couple of spaceships here and there. Um, the aliens. I'm not gonna say that their their designs are are not exactly creative. Well, the the, the porcupine. The porcupine man. That's the closest thing to be creative. But then there's a scene where they come with kind of like an like a, 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 a in this armor that makes them look like predators. Um, more aliens. I will have asked for more aliens. And instead of uh, instead of so too much talking for exposition, it's better to show us uh, show us a lot more about about the about this world. Remember, in a movie, in a movie is, the movie is a visual me medium. You should, you should show more than tell. And, 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 and at this date, uh, cap this date, it is, it's just that. It, it's just a, uh, <laughs>
You want me to finish this movie? Uh, this review. Okay, fine. Review's over. My superiors don't want me to 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 run this long. <laughs>